Greetings and welcome to Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. We continue to travel in our time together in the book of Proverbs. We're there in chapter 1, beginning in verse 2, and today we're looking at the source of true wisdom. Last time we met together, we talked about the pursuit of wisdom, and today we can never fully find it. We cannot pursue it unless we know where we're headed, where we're going, and so we need to know the source of true wisdom. Notice what it says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase their learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. In this very beginning of the book of Proverbs, <clears throat> God, through the human author Solomon, gives the, the reason, gives the purpose of this book being written. He said, first of all, I want you to understand the reason I'm writing uh, this book, uh, these truths, uh, the reason I'm writing is, first of all, God called me to do this. God gave me the words, and it was to be recorded so that other people could read it, learn from it, and be victorious and successful in the lives God gave them. And then he says, here's the real purpose of the specific book that God is writing. First of all, to know wisdom and instruction. What is wisdom? Uh, we need to know what that is if we are going to be passionate about uh, finding its source and pursuing this wisdom. And so this book has been written to know wisdom and instruction. It's also been written to perceive the words of understanding, to perceive, to get it, to recognize it. And it's talking about the idea of understanding. And this word understanding in the Proverbs in chapter 1, verse 2, is talking about the power to distinguish right from wrong and truth from falsehood, truth from lies. Oh, how we need to perceive the words of understanding, to know right from wrong. You know, the Bible says there'll be a day, and I think we're living in that day, when the things that are right, the world will call wrong. And the things that are wrong, the world will call right. And so many things that the Bible says are wrong are an atrocity in God's eyes. The world today, are we, we wrap our arms around them, we receive them, we accept them, we condone those things, and the world says these things are okay now, they're right now. If the Bible says they're wrong, they will never be okay in God's eyes. And so we need to perceive the words of understanding. And then it says, verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, instru justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, the word simple there literally means someone who is open-minded and ready to receive the truth. If you are closed-minded, if you have your mind made up already, then you are not going to be open to receive the wisdom that God has for us. We don't feel like we need it when our mind is closed. And so when we come to the Word of God, we don't already need to have our minds made up when we come to the Word of God, but we need to have an open heart, an open mind to receive what God's Holy Spirit wants to teach us through His Word. And so this is the idea of the simple person. He goes on there in verse 4, to the young man, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. The idea of discretion is to know what to do in a situation without unduly causing any kind of offense or revealing offense, uh, offensive kinds of information. Uh, it's to know how to receive what we're learning, and it's how to instruct others in what we are learning as well. To be able to have the gift of instruction, of teaching, of speaking the truth, but doing it in love. And this comes only 
by wisdom. It says not only for the young man, not only for the simple, not only for those who, who feel like, well, I don't, I don't know everything I need to. Well, notice what it says next. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. doesn't matter how old you are, you should never quit learning. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you've cataloged in your mind over the course of your lifetime. There's always still more to learn. And so that only comes with humility. Uh, It only comes not as selfishness, but selflessness. Lord, we don't have all the answers, and so we are open to being taught. Whether we're young and simple, whether we have been a, a wise person, an older person, whether we're a man of understanding, there's always the need for attaining wise counsel. Now notice that, that phrase, not just attaining counsel. We can get opinions from all over the world, and if we ask somebody for if we ask 10 people for uh, their opinion, we may get 10 different opinions. That's not what we're looking for. That's not what we need. But we need to to come and to desire wise counsel. There is no greater wisdom than we find in the teaching of God's Word. And so the Lord needs to be our counsel. Godly people need to be our human counselors here on earth so that we might have the counsel to understand the Proverbs, the truth that we are reading the words of the wise. We need to be able to notice those, to quickly identify, hey, these words are important from those words that are just being like clanging cymbals, making noise, but they're not really all that helpful in our lives. And then it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord, a reverence, an awe, a a life-possessing faith and belief that God is the one who has the answers, to know where to turn to find the wisdom that we need in order to live a successful life, and it's God. This reverence, this all the fear of the Lord, is the idea of worshiping the Lord, of opening our minds not to the things around us, not to the philosophies of the world, but to open our minds to the things of God, the truth of God's Word. But it says we have a choice because the Bible says there are fools who despise wisdom and instruction from the Lord. And so today, would you choose to find the ultimate wisdom, to catalog the ultimate knowledge, and then to know how to use that knowledge for your life and for the lives of others around you? Only God is the source of true wisdom. And here's his word, the source of that wisdom. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being willing to invest yourself, your knowledge, your wisdom into our lives. And Father, may we open our minds, our hearts, not to the negative things, not to the false things in the world, but Lord, to those things that are timeless and eternal from your word. Help us to understand what you have for us in your word, and let us live accordingly. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I pray that you have a great day in the Lord.